Hey there, Luke here again and welcome to the second video for building your own hydrofoil. In this video we're going to be cutting the outline of the front and rear wings and also bringing the timber core to thickness. So this will be the first stage in getting our core ready and then in the next video we'll actually shape our foil design and then we'll go through the glassing uh, step by step as well in the coming videos. So first I thought I'd talk a little bit about the timber cores. So I've chosen two pieces of wood here. There's a couple of things when you're sourcing your wood uh, that you should try and keep in mind. The first is that it doesn't have any knots. If there's any knots in the face of the wood, it'll be really hard to shape, particularly with the spoke shave. Um, it, even any very aggressive change in uh, grain that will happen around knots will also make it hard just to shape. So what you're really looking for is a nice clear piece of wood. It's only a small piece, so even at the hardware you should be able to find a section of a good wood that doesn't have any knots in it. The, what I've chosen here is red cedar, and you can see the grain pattern if you can see that, is it's sort of on a bit of an angle. What we're looking, ideally it would be going across the board and it wouldn't be going along the board like this. What we really are trying to avoid is a big rainbow shape throughout the board. If it looks like that, uh, that's called backsawn, and what that will do is the wood will be far more likely to, to uh, twist or at least cup while you're still working on it. So the more stable wood has this sort of quarter sawn, which is what's it called, so uh, shorter grains running across this, the timber. So if you can find that, and also nice straight grain that's running uh, all the way up, so not to sort of move in too much. That is actually a bit of an ask, uh, believe it or not, to find that in a hardware store can be hard, but uh, if you can, that's, what, that's ideally what you're looking for. A beautiful, nice, clean piece of wood that looks similar to this uh, would be absolutely ideal. So this is red cedar, this is yellow cedar. Yellow cedar is uh, more heavy. It's definitely stronger as well. Uh, so normally, I, I haven't actually built any with yellow cedar yet, but I thought it'd be fun to use yellow cedar for the rear stabilizer. The amount of wood in the rear stabilizer is very small, so the, the, the difference in weight between these two would be uh, very small. So the first step that I like to do, let's get into how we're going to machine up the core. The first thing I like to do is bring it to a similar size to the wing, uh, but a little bit bigger. So we're not cutting it to the exact size of the wing, you leave it slightly oversized. So what I mean by that is, you can see the dimension of the front wing here is 680 millimeters, all dimensions here are in millimeters. And so if we're looking, let's grab a tape, 680 millimeters, so I've already cut this piece of wood off to about 750, so it's a bit oversized. It's gonna be that big, so you've just got a little bit left over. Because we'll be cutting the outline with the plan, it doesn't need to be the exact size. All we need is the correct thickness and one straight edge. So I've done the same thing with the rear stabilizer. So the rear stabilizer is 340 by 80. And if you look at this, we have about 90 and much longer than three, it's about 460 at the moment, so oversize. Now, the first step is actually to machine it down to thickness. So, the specified thickness for the front wing here is 14 millimeters, and you can see that I'm a bit oversized here. So I'm gonna machine this down to 14 millimeters, and I'm gonna machine this one down to seven millimeters, which is the rear wing, as specified on the plan. Now, this is probably the most machine intensive part of uh, building this foil. It's, it requires a few woodworking tools in order to machine this down. If you don't have the woodworking tools, then you could go to a shop, and as in a uh, furniture shop or a cabinet making shop, and say, hey, do you mind running this through to a particular thickness? or you could cut it down on a table saw. If you have the table saw, you could cut it down vertically, or you, uh, maybe a friend has it, or maybe you have the tools. But, and you could, even, you could even hand shave it down if you're feeling uh, energetic. So, but for me, I have the tools, so let's get out there and I'll show you how I machine it down. Okay, so the first thing is just to get one straight edge. So if you've bought the wood from the hardware store, it might already have a nice clean edge. But for me, I'm just gonna machine an edge, then I'm going to cut it to Thick, uh, to width at about five millimeters bigger than the size. So this one I'll be cutting to 85 
and this one will be running to 155 just so it's a bit easier to machine and then I'll be running them through the thicknesser so that I get this down to the 14 and this one down to the 7. Okay, so now I've machined the wood up to size. So you can see I've brought this down to the seven millimeters um, and this one to 14. I've got one nice clean edge, that's all we need. So we just mark that as that will be the back uh, on both of them. And you can see you're basically just building a rectangle. This is going to be a lot easier now that it's at thickness uh, for the shaping stages. So now what we'll do is actually cut out the templates. So if I come to the back and the templates, now of course you can draw your own template. One of the reasons that I have the dimensions on the come back here, for instance, is because I used to mark these out by hand. So I'll draw the, the rectangle and then I'd come in 25, 75, and 55 millimeters. I'd plot a point and then I'd come down 26 to there. 51 to there and 77 to there and then that would draw that curve so I could actually just draw a curve like that and I'd make my own cardboard template for half of it but at, you know and that's what I've always done that I'd do that for my surfboards and for the foils and everything however I thought it'd be easy if we can just print it out like this so the reason that we do half of it is it's always quite difficult to actually uh, draw both I mean with the computer you can but by hand it's very hard to draw both sides evenly so we basically just mark on half and then flip it over and mark the other half so first step is to cut them out One thing you really want to pay attention to is this line right here that I'm cutting. This is our alignment line and so this really needs to be very well cut right next to the edge. Um, the alignment tab we want to keep on so we can handle it uh, and of course everything wants to be cut neatly but these alignment lines need to be absolutely perfect. Okay, so now we've cut out the two templates. The first step is to actually mark the center line of the foils. So what we do is just basically mark in the, in the center of the wood. It's longer than it needs to be, um, so there's plenty of space, but we'll just mark in the center and draw a square line. So basically about 750, so uh, about 375 is a is approximately the center. And, yep. and then this one, about 420 would be close enough, 220 I should say. All right, so now just with an approximate center, choose the straightest edge, make sure you're going off your nice straight edge. Um, and then we're going to mark a square line. This line's really important for your alignment. So a nice, straight, clean, squared line. that and like that. Now the reason I put it up on these sticks is when working with timber 
you sort of need to move through the processes pretty quickly. So once you've started machining the wood, it's a good idea to get it all the way to the, the first sealer coat of resin. And that is because the timber will move and warp. So you definitely don't want to machine the wood like this, then have it leaning up against the wall for a week and come back to it. It will have changed shape probably. So you've got to get it all the way to the sealer point where it's no longer getting moisture in and out. That's basically what will make it change shape. So one of the other tip is to have it elevated. It lets air flow underneath it. If you were to sit it on concrete, for instance, the whole thing would cup like within a matter of hours. So now that we've got our centre line, what we want to do is, um, it doesn't look in the centre actually, we've got 380, right, it's close enough. What we want to do is use the alignment tab and you can see, you can just make out where the pencil mark is on the front and the back. Now it's really important that you line it up, you can't have it skewed. It's very important that it's lined up absolutely perfectly and then when we flip it, we line it up at the same position, front and back, to draw the other side. So let's go ahead and start with the big one. Now one thing is you can actually, what I like to do is make sure you've got a nice mark all the way to the edge and then push this one into the corner so that the very flush is at the back there and then the front will be will be trimming all the front off it just gives you a good reference front to back so again just pay some special attention there so I'm just about one pencil thickness off the back and you can just make out the pencil line there. You could take this down, or you can just put a couple of heavy things on it, just so it doesn't move around. It's only paper, and we'll mark it out. It would be better if this is cardboard, but you can do the paper. You just have to be gentle with the pencil. So now the half is marked, we can flip it over and essentially do exactly the same thing to the other side. So we're lining that corner up right at the back, like that, bring this around to just make out the pencil line, there we go, lay it down, mark this side. Okay, so now we have our front wing marked out evenly on both sides and this line will be our reference point essentially for the rest of the build. It'll, well, this is where we'll mark our screw holes to join to the fuselage uh, and that way we know that it's always true. We know that really this is, we, it doesn't matter about any of these outside now, we'll cut this shape and it will always be based on that center line. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this exactly the same thing for the rear wing. And so now we have the rear wing traced as well. So it is a little more difficult with the paper because the pencil can sort of move the paper if it gets caught in any of the timber grains. So if you've got the opportunity to print it on a thicker card, that would actually be a lot easier. That's what I normally would build the template with. 
But in, in nevertheless, we've got it marked out and the key now is to cut it and then really use our eye to shape it neatly and make sure it's all smooth and, and uh, the right shape. So what I'll be doing is I actually like to cut this out on a bandsaw, but if you don't have a bandsaw, you could use a jigsaw for this uh, and then you can just clean up with the spoke shape, which you'll see me do in a moment anyway. So let's head out to the bandsaw and cut out the other one. Okay, so I've just finished cutting out the outline on the bandsaw and the next step, you can see I've tried to cut it as close to the line as I can, uh, but it'll always wander a little bit, but it's, if you get it as neat as you can, it's going to make this next step easier and that is to basically sand this outline. We want to get the outline pretty much exactly perfect. It will be the finished outline, so this is how it will always be around that very edge of the foil so you can use a spoke shave and a plane uh, and a sander you could use a, a an orbital sander even around the edges but well, the way I like to do it is actually use a belt sander clamped to a bench on its side so I'm going to set that up and then clean these up So now that I've sanded uh, it as close as I can, something I like to do is just come back and just really double check. You can see there's a bit of a high point there. So you're using your, your eye and your hands just to basically feel out if there's any highs or lows. Side it, roll, roll down those edges and make sure that it's nice and smooth. Because again, what we'll be doing in the next stages is creating our foil shape but we won't actually be reshaping this outline. So you want to get the outline as close as you can now so that it's perfect for the next stages. So what I like to do, I can feel that it's not perfect even though I was using the sander. So I like to actually come back to uh, using the spoke shave. I find the spoke shave you can actually get uh, really nice straight lines by just cleaning that up and just hit Spoke shave will just sort of hit some of those highs off. I find if I hold the spoke shave on a bit of a 45 like this, it sort of helps self level some of those highs and lows. So that's definitely a nice smoother line there now. The front edges you can normally get pretty good with the sander or however you're doing it, but it's these sort of inside curves that are a bit harder. So I'll do the same thing with the big wing. If it's your first time working with wood, you sort of have to go down the grain. So typically when you're going down into a hill like this, you'll actually push this way, depending on the grain direction. And then now I'm coming down this hill, so I'll actually come this way. Yeah, that feels pretty good. And now we have our outline. So 
that's a good start. And then in the next stages, what we'll be doing is basically uh, carving out our foil shape. So what's really nice about getting it to this stage is we've already got our flat bottom, so the surface is already done, our outline is now done, and so we just do our foil shape and our holes, and then we fiberglass it. So I'll see you in the next video.